Hey, what's up guys? Bajira here, bringing you another Mobius Final Fantasy video. Once again, huge shout out to Square Enix for sponsoring this video. Been having a lot of fun playing this game, and I'm glad to share a little bit more gameplay and storyline basics with you guys in this video. So what we're looking at here is, one of the options you're given in the beginning of these missions is to rent a card from other players. And the selection for this particular mission isn't very expansive, but sometimes you can get a really awesome card that helps address a potential weakness in your deck or allows you to exploit a weakness of your opponents. But right now, the build that I've got going for my deck is definitely mostly focused on fire and earth damage. A big part of the reason why I have so much fire and earth damage abilities is because I decided to go back to the Onion Knight instead of the Mage. I know in my last video, as part of the tutorial, they wanted you to test out the Mage class just to see what changing classes looks like. But I'm definitely not going to play a, a Magic Caster class when I could instead, you know, smack some stuff with a sword. So I went back to Onion Knight. And when you're designing a deck for a particular class, you're going to want to pick cards that match up with your class. So I'm not going to pick a bunch of caster cards as an Onion Knight. I'm going to be picking cards that have melee attributes. And for whatever reason, most of the melee cards have a fire or earth affinity. And I think that's probably just because those are the cards that I'm finding early on in the game, but even though my current build is pretty heavily focused on fire and earth damage, we are handling these early fights just fine. So at the end of each mission, you get to see the experience that you gained, how your cards leveled up, and of course you get a look at the different skill seeds you got, in addition to any cards that you may have received on that mission. You'll often find that you get either resources or items at the end of the mission for clearing the area, which is also pretty cool. And when I mentioned earlier that Mobius Final Fantasy is a very story-driven game, this is what I was referring to. Between missions, a lot of times you will get a little cutscene that either gives you information about your character or, in this situation, presents you with a problem, which provides some context for your battles. In this situation, this awesomely armored knight is telling us that it's a good idea in general to protect Moogles since they're all sort of bound by one greater consciousness. So if I help this little guy out, then, uh, you know, I've got the Moogles on my side forever. So probably a good idea to help him out. It is still a kind of a strange world and you definitely don't have all the information or fully understand exactly what's going on here, but that experience kind of draws you into the game and makes you want to continue to progress through the game to figure out the story behind all of this. So, of course, we can't let this poor little guy get taken by the monster, so we're going to hop into battle and see if we can't save this little guy. Now, for most of my experience with Mobius Final Fantasy, uh, the battles, as you guys know from the last video, you can just auto-fight these things, which provides you a couple different advantages. Obviously, you're gonna be doing a lot of battles in Mobius Final Fantasy, so if every single one, especially when it's just kind of simple mobs like this, doesn't take a lot of effort or time to get through, that's kind of nice. But then, of course, you fight the big boys every once in a while. You make it to the boss fights. And the boss fights, once again, you can still auto-fight these things, but every once in a while you can step in if there's like a particular move that you'd like to do. You can see your ultimate gauge building down there, so you will have to step in and use your own ultimate. But fortunately, the game also helps you learn what the appropriate move is, making sure that you're using your defensives uh, whenever possible, especially making sure that you use the defensives that match the enemy's affinity so that you can mitigate damage on yourself and make it less likely that you'll receive elements that will deal less damage to your opponent as well. So I kind of hinted at this in my first video. I feel like Mobius Final Fantasy ends up being much less about extremely tactical, turn-based combat, and really more about deck building. Or at least that's how I decided to play it. It definitely makes sense to me that you could play it as a tactical, turn-based game and if you wanted to go that route. But I think what I would prefer to do is go ahead and let the battles play out in auto mode and just rely on building the most effective deck that you can because that's going to lead to a really fun and relaxing mobile RPG game experience where you don't really have to sweat the actual gameplay as much and you can learn about the story and see how powerful the deck that you've created can actually be in battle. So in a way it's an interactive storyline and I, I like that idea especially because Final Fantasy games so often are awesome compelling storylines. And in Mobius Final Fantasy, like I mentioned earlier, it sucks you right in. You don't really know all about what's going on. And sometimes for me, I'm less focused on making sure I kill these mobs in the right way, and I'm more focused on learning about the storyline. But at the same time, the game does offer you the opportunity to get in there and mix it up, actually controlling the, the waves of battle. So you definitely have options in terms of how you want to play the game and how you want to experience the storyline. And I do think that's a good thing. 
Now, just because I mentioned it earlier in the video, I do want to show you guys the power of finding a really good rental card. So, I mentioned that my deck was mostly Fire and Earth, and this card that I'm going to use now is a very powerful Water type, but also still a Melee type card. So, this thing fits right in. So, the next time I ended up fighting a Dragon, which was a pretty intense battle earlier, we're going to be able to break their guard and absolutely detonate a massive water attack on him. So that one didn't even break his guard yet and already took a huge chunk of his actual health bar down. So you can imagine what happens when we actually break his armor. Get him with one, power up the attack, hit him for 2,000 damage. So that thing cranks the damage and just goes to show you how much fun it is to find the right combination of cards to match your opponent's weaknesses. Mobius Final Fantasy is probably one of the most in-depth and especially story-driven games that I've ever played on mobile. And I really do like the fact that you can opt for a more streamlined autoplay style of experience in the game, or you can really delve in, build your deck, and then be in absolute control of the tactics and the flow of battle. Once again, I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check out Mobius Final Fantasy. It'll be there for you. Thank you once again to Square Enix for sponsoring this video. I've really had a lot of fun checking out Mobius Final Fantasy, and hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Peace!